Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels. It's late October and this week I'm going to be showing you how to autumn prune your rose bushes and we're also going to be storing our winter root vegetables. Here we are in the garden, it's the end of October now and we've had a couple of inquiries from viewers Carol and Ruth asking about what to do with roses at this time of the year and although roses will try and flower and flower and flower and even now the end of October this one here has got a little rosebud on there and it probably won't develop but if it does it will be damaged by the wet and frost that we get so what I like to do with my roses at this time of the year is to actually stop them flowering stop them growing to make sure they get their winter rest and build up the strength ready for next year so this is a shrub rose this is one called uh, Lady of Shallot. It's an Austin rose but you could do the same with Floribundas or hybrid tea roses and what I'm going to do basically is just to reduce it in height a little bit to give it a shape but it also stops it rocking around. So this is part pruning because the main pruning will do in March. So it's half pruning now so I'm just going to use my secateurs and I'm going to prune off basically shoots just above a bud and in here but either any dead heads on there we're just going to take them off so it's quite easy to do don't worry too much about pruning exactly to the shape you want because as I say we're going to come back and we're going to do all this again there's an old flower on there that's finished and then in March they'll get their proper tidy up but this will stop them flowering and it means they've got to have a rest which they need because they've been in flower since June so it really is as simple as that and if it's a standard think of a standard as a rose bush on a leg so what you need to do where you've got your straight stem and your vase like shape at the top again reduce it back by half or two thirds to get that lovely goblet shape and again we'll look at it in March to give it the final prune but on the front garden I've got some climbers which I want to look at next Other roses we can look at at this time of the year are climbers and ramblers uh, and they can both be given a bit of an autumn prune. This is a climbing rose and this is one I'm trying to grow up both sides of this window to get flowers. Now the problem with climbers is they naturally want to grow up to the sun so the flowers are at the top and as a result we can end up with bare stems at the base and no flowers which is a bit annoying and it doesn't look particularly good. Now there's not an awful lot we can do at this time of the year. This is another one that we'd need to prune hard in March and the way to get more growth from the base on a climbing rose is to take out one or two of the older stems low down, cut them really hard back and if we do it in early spring just as they're starting to grow they'll produce nice new growth and we can train it in. So I'm not going to be that hard at this time but what I can do like we did with the bush rose on the back garden is just to tidy it up and we can trim off some of the branches that are growing out and just to keep it flat so that it doesn't flap around too much in the winter gales and that will keep it nice and tidy uh, and then we can sort it out. Alternatively what I've done on this wall here with a climbing rose is I've actually fanned it out along the wall and as the branches have grown I've brought them out to almost horizontal and that works really well and it means that I've got foliage and branches all the way down to the ground and all I'm going to do now is to do a little bit of deadheading, thinning it out a little bit to tidy it up for the winter. I did mention ramblers, ramblers are pruned slightly differently and unfortunately I haven't got one to show you but what we do with ramblers is they flower on the previous season's growth so all the growth that was made last year will have flowered this summer with beautiful blooms but they won't flower again next year so what we do is we cut out the long old woody stems with the old flower heads on cut those out to ground level but we leave in all the lovely new growth that's been made this summer that been strong and lush and again like this rose if you fan them out to a framework of wires or trellis they will then flower for you next year so you prune them on an annual basis take out the old and leave in the new but what I'm going to do with this climbing now is just finish by tidying it up and cutting back some of the long growths. A 
And finally, we've popped into the vegetable garden to lift the carrots, because I always like to lift them before the weather gets really too bad. I grow them under this frame with a mesh on it to keep the carrot fly off. They're a real problem if I don't, and they just completely destroy them. But I find if I leave them in the ground over winter, the slugs get them and, and we do sometimes get carrot fly. Somehow it gets in. They've done really well this year, the carrots. They've some of the best carrots I've grown for a few years, although I say it myself. So I want to keep these now to use them over winter. So all I do, I've got a plastic crate here, some old compost that's come out of hanging baskets or whatever you've got. Twist the tops off the carrots. Uh, don't wash them, leave them as they are. And I'm gonna basically just put a layer of carrots in the bottom of this tray. Look at that for a whopper, that one. That's unbelievably big feed a family that would for a week. So I'm just going to put a layer of carrots in there like that and then cover them over with a little bit of compost so they're nice in there. A bit of compost on top of them and then another layer and I'll build that up until we get to the top of the crate. So I'll probably get three or four layers in there. This is just damp. You could use sand as well if you haven't got the compost and then that's going to go outside at the back of a shed and covered over with some more fleece just to keep the worst of the weather off. It doesn't matter if they get down to freezing, I just don't want them to freeze solid and they'll keep in really good condition and then when we need them over winter all we do is delve in there into the compost and pull out some carrots and enjoy fresh carrots right the way through the winter. And if you've grown beetroot it's exactly the same to store them and just simply twist the tops off to stop them bleeding otherwise they go soft keep them in the damp sand and the damp compost and they'll keep right the way through the winter until next March or April. Well thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed pots and trowels this week and also thank you to Cobra Garden and hopefully we'll see you in the garden again next week.